In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get 100,000 free faces artificially uh, generated by artificial intelligence for your Joomla site. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. Thanks for tuning in to Maintenance Monday number 109 here on the Basic Joomla YouTube's channel tutorial. If you're watching live, as many of you already have, please say hi in chat and give the video a thumbs up and that will help others to find it. All right, the reason that I picked this topic today is not so much about maintenance for our Joomla sites, but I, I saw this site uh, being talked about or shared in a chat group that I'm in, and it's super creepy, and so um, <laughs> I thought it would be fun. Uh, plus, you never know when you might need a free royalty-free face for your website, and we'll talk about that. All right, so let me fire up my remote control here, and we will go over to the computer screen here uh, apparently that's not going to work either right here we go all right i have to organize this here hey head on over to basicjuma.com forward slash giveaways sign up for the newsletter and you'll be automatically entered into the monthly draw for a bunch of cool juma prizes which you'll see on there you can click on the link so i have to build this up and yes i have not yet announced the winner for september and i realize today's the last day so here's what i'm going to do today i'm going to set up the newsletter like a template for sending it out tomorrow october 1st i will send out announcing september's winner and october's winner all right so head on over there so this site here generated.photos uh, let me just uh, paste that in chat for you. This is what we're talking about. Here are 100 faces, <clears throat> excuse me, generated by artificial intelligence and they are free to download. Now, why would you do that? Um, you know, I'm not, I like to keep things real on my website, so I'm not going to use a fake face instead of me. Although in today's thumbnail, you'll see that I did use one of these fake faces. But if you wanted to, let's say you had staff in a support department and you wanted a picture, but you didn't want to use their exact picture or their picture for privacy reasons, and uh, you didn't feel like using something from a stock photo, then uh, maybe you just want to go get one of these faces. I don't know. There's probably some really legitimate uses for it. I just thought it was interesting and I thought it was creepy. So here we are, generated.photos. You browse on a Google Drive and you get a bunch of folders here and none of these faces are of real people so let's just pick a folder and uh, it's very interesting because oh well, there's only one in there okay uh because um let's go into this folder because um some of them have not worked out very well the pictures they have some weird irregularities in them um and i don't know what the for instance here check this one out i don't know what's happening here uh, but uh, this would, but uh, you know, so there's probably a percentage. I don't know if it matches uh, deformities in real life. But anyways, you've got all of these pictures to choose from. These are not people. These have been generated by a computer randomly. Uh, in fact, here's the guy I use today for my thumbnail. He doesn't exist. Anyways, I thought this was really cool and really weird and um so i thought hey you know what it's a cool resource if ever you're going to use a quick picture or you want maybe the other thing too is maybe you're doing a demo site for a client and you want to just find a bunch of pictures to put in to show how authors can have uh their images or uh, you just need some faces here's a bunch of free faces they're fake they don't belong to anybody and uh <laughs> um just for fun, see, here's here's one that didn't work out too well. Um, yeah, they didn't do very well on that job. Artificial intelligence has got a way to go anyways. Uh, but uh, anyways, that's all it was. Just something quirky and fun. But if you're working on your Joomla site, you need a face really quick, why not just go out to here, grab one super quick, one that works for you. And uh, here's one, here's a guy. There you go. He looks a bit like Justin Bieber. I guess with the haircut but then you have faces and you can move on because when you're working on your website it's all about getting it done efficiently and doing what you need and if you're doing a demo site or if you just need a need a, an anonymous face for whatever use that you would use there you go that is a great place to do it 
Um, it's called generated.photos.net. And basically, yes, Suri, that is the thing that I wanted to show you today because shiny things fascinate me. And uh, there you go. That was it. Uh, we're going to chat more about this. We're going to hang out as we usually do. But if you just came to see what the heck the free faces were, now you know. Uh, thanks for your support of this channel if you're leaving now. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Ring the bell for notifications. Uh, make sure your devices are set to get notifications uh, that you want. And uh, you'll find out when other things are happening. They're not all crazy like this. But uh, I thought this was a fun one. And it's a tool that I've already used once. To <laughs> For on a thumbnail today. So, for those of you who are leaving, thanks, enjoy your Juno sites, and God bless. And for those of you that are staying, do you have any other ideas how you might use such a ridiculous, creepy thing? Put it in chat. Uh, I'll tell you a bonus point. You want to do something fun, uh, go to this, start browsing through the articles, and see what your reactions are. This is a great way uh, to see what's going on inside of your head because uh, since none of these people exist, your reactions will say a lot about yourself. If you see someone like who, you look at this, who do you think is smart? Who do you think is not so bright? Who do you think is poor? Who do you think is someone that would be a nice person? Who is someone that gives you a terrible reaction inside of yourself? You know what? All of that stuff is you. It's not these people because... These aren't people. Um, Valerie says W H I T E. White. I'm not quite sure what that means, but there are a lot of white people on here, but there's also not a lot of white people on here as well. Um, yeah, so, anyways, when you look at these pictures, it's a great way. It's, it's a bit like looking into a mirror, although you're not looking into a mirror. Although you're looking into your side to see how you react to people and what your thoughts and prejudices are. Anyways, I thought it was... Uh, now, this is... I also understand this is part of a project uh, for uh, where they take these faces and they are getting pretty good at putting them on uh, in, uh, in videos on people and generating. So uh, it's going to be harder and harder and harder. You think, you know, what Photoshop has done for... Is this a real picture or not? Uh, AI is coming along quite a bit where you can hard you can't even tell if it's a real video or a real person or something. So anyways. And once again, chat is not syncing up in the right hand side. Blah 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 blah. I wonder what the problem is. I'm gonna do a quick change here. All right, let's see. Chat is a frustrating thing trying to put it up on the side. And today, for sure, it'll be nice to have the chat there because uh, for those of you who are watching the replay of this, the beginning had no sound. And I've already cut that out. So that means chat will a chat replay will not be working here. Um, all right. So what else is new out there, everybody? What are you working on? What are your ideas for... Uh, like I said, what are your ideas for fake faces? Uh, Hannibal Lectern had an idea, had some creative ways of using faces. They weren't fake, they were other people. But um, while we're there, okay, so anyways, while we're waiting for that, let's head on to Joomla Extensions Facebook group, see what new is happening. I am feeling great compared to last week. Oh my goodness, I just feel super duper. I am... I'm soon enough after being sick, grateful for um, uh, being healthy because I can remember how, how crappy I felt. Uh, okay, Cold Layers Theme Force. There's another theme. Don't put themes in here, people. Uh, be a body mass, body mass index calculator from Syed Sheik Mahmoud. He cranks out a lot of stuff. Let's check out. What is my height? Oh, I wonder. Oh, this is. I wonder if there's a demo. Let's see what my body mass index is. Do do do. 
Mary, you start your first site with easy layouts and you're finding it very easy and a great tool. Cool. Yes, that was something I just updated. All right, let's see. Six, uh, I am six, six inches. Oh, six times 12 is uh, 72. I'm 72 inches. My weight is 175 pounds. My body mass index is normal, 23.73. All right. Uh, yes, easy layouts. I was uh, looking at that uh, last night. I was doing some updating of sites, and I had to update the version, the one that I have. And um, uh, this week, I'm going to be firing up a new server. I'm going with uh, Liquid Web. I need, I'm going with a managed server uh, because... Um, as some of you know, as I've talked on the channel and talked privately with you, uh, I enjoy having my own server, but uh, there's a bunch of things that I struggle with. And so uh, I can still have my own server and do stuff, but then there's backup support for doing things that I'm too afraid to do because I don't want to crash my client's site. So, uh, yeah, so I thought, well, I have to get that organized and I really need to learn some easy layouts and some of these other things that I've been talking about and that people have shown. Um, oh, uh, Valor. Okay. Yeah. Valerie, um, da, 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 Valerie. Okay. That's the comment about it being white. They have a way to go to, uh, here on the images for diversity. Yeah. We could kind of do a count here. That's Caucasian, Caucasian, not Caucasian. This person's not Caucasian. I would say she's not Caucasian. Uh, this guy. Yeah. Yes, but when you when you do a big scroll, it definitely is wider than it is not. So um, no, there's uh, yep. I hear you. But um, yeah, as an experiment, maybe they needed to up that, eh? Uh, oh no, there's a no. Well, there's there's a few, but I can see that. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. <coughs> Let's see what's happening in chat here. Uh, Vinny, what did you miss? You missed no sound at the beginning, and then you missed me showing 100,000 free faces that are artificially generated. Uh, now we're talking, Mary's just saying that she uh, started her first site with easy layouts and is finding it easy and a great tool. And... Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, and then uh, Valerie said, Mary, I'm considering template creator CK do the fact that you use it and report it being happy with it. And Mary said, smart move. Um, Mary, you still use template creator CK. And uh, yes, <laughs> creepy AI generated faces, Vinny. Uh, Vinny still uses easy layouts and you're using in conjunction with template C creator CK. Oh, and Vinny came in me talking about the server. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to set up a server and, um, and, um, it's going to be actually more expensive than what I'm running right now, but the, f the removal of frustration, fear, and fatigue, every sermon should have three points, <laughs> um, uh, will be nice for me for the extra money because, uh, right now the server I have, uh, I need to create more space on a partition or a mount or something like that and to do that you unmount something you change the size then you remount it i don't i don't know what to do but it's just it freaks me out because you're doing it on the live thing and it's just uh you know i would rank myself not as a novice at running my own server probably intermediate but um i just need to farm that off and uh, the other thing too is that right now with me uh, on my own, when I um, uh, when I am uh, I'm the only one that monitors my server. So if it goes down ten minutes after I go to sleep, it stays down till I wake up. Um, and I could set up alerts in that, but I've not been successful in that. And so I really want monitored as well or managed because if it goes down. 
they'll just work on it and get it going and figure out what the problem is without me even needing to alert them or tell them. So that would be nice. Yeah, Vinny runs hosting for his clients without having to worry about the running of a server. Okay, I'm going to switch uh, screens here again just for a sec, folks. Be right back. There we go. I had to get the chat working right since this is going to be the record of this. Um, Mary says one is a template and the other manages article layouts. Right. So CK, uh, template creator CK is template and um, easy layouts handage the, handles the layouts of articles. Um, yeah, so Vinny runs hosting for his clients without having to worry about the running of a server. So he is reselling space, or um, I think they each have their own C panel with what Vinny is doing. Because Valerie asked Vinny, does that mean you take full control of C panel and they don't have access as a user? Uh, there is a way, there are reseller accounts. So for instance, I have a couple of resellers on my server and uh, they actually create C panel accounts for their clients. So they sort of have their own interface with the web hosting manager. Uh, and then, so each of their clients has their own cPanel and they can also access their client cPanel, which is nice. Yeah, and it's nice, uh, it's nice to have it that way because when I'm working on my clients, I uh, always go in to their cPanel and do things, but it gives them an option, they have the option to go in and create their own email addresses or do what they want, which is great because it's, I mean, if you're handling everything for someone, that's good, but if they want some access, then they, they pretty much need to have their, their own access. All right, so we checked out this body mass indicator calculator. What else is new here? Quantum Manager. And this was shared with me by... Do, do, do. Who was it? Oh, someone sent me an email. A message. Um, I think it was Ivor. Let me just check that. Uh, I'm going to go back to chat on the right here. Do, 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 Johan did. It was Johan that told me about this quantum manager. And I think what we will do is check this out on Wednesday. I don't have a topic yet for Watch Me Work Wednesday, uh, but we were doing uh, the last two weeks. We were t uh, last week we looked at editing images in JCE Editor, doing quick edits. I believe that's what we looked at. And uh, so Johan shared with me uh, that this about Quantum Manager. So why don't we check this out on Wednesday and see what it does? Especially, I think, uh, yeah, we'll check out the features of it and have a look at it hang out and check it out. So that's what we will do on Wednesday. So that was a new release from um, Eugene Savokin, and I believe that they are this, um, who is that? Uh, yeah, Nornext. Okay, anything else down here? Colair's theme, theme, theme. And uh, yes, Nor Competition, which we would have looked at already from that date a while ago. Uh, Vinny says, using a framework like Gantry or Asteroid, you don't need to have a template creator. Less things to load for you. I, and Vinny, you know, I missed that last week in chat. I think it was Wednesday. You said that you were building a site in Asteroid. So uh, that's interesting. Interesting to hear what you think about it and how you're finding it. Also, everybody, uh, Joomcast. There is a new episode of Joomcast today. Interview. We interviewed. Yeah, let's do this. Let's share the URL. Control copy. Do, 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 do. Control V. Everybody, there's the latest version of Joomcast to listen to. 
uh, interview with Mark DeChevre. And there's a guy that loves, not only does he love Jim Lee, he loves custom fields. So check that out. Episode number eight. We already have episode uh, nine and ten recorded. I'm going to start e editing nine soon. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, hey, I've, uh, you know, Asteroids, uh, uh, Joom Devs, JD Builder, I've gotten some sneak peeks into some of the stuff that they're planning on putting in their pro version. It is pretty cool. Let me tell you that. Uh, really, really neat stuff. In fact, one thing that Chayton showed me the other day, I was just basically one of those shut up and take my money moments. Um, but uh, yes, custom fields, the best things to happen in Juma. Vinny says, so far he likes Gantry better. All right, well, I'm going to take Vinny's wrench away. <laughs> um yes it's uh i tell you i'm getting better and better at gantry the more i figure it out and the more i get used to where things are um the um all right so joomcast what else what else is happening out there in your joomla world or in your world we're having a beautiful day here my grandson has been here for a visit since a week ago Saturday he's having a great time uh, he uh, having a great time with his grandmother and I think he's having a good time with me those two have something special let me tell you um, what else shall we uh, check out uh, just talking about Joomcast Daniel Dubois episode 7 he is now the vice president of Joomla, of Open Source Matters. So you want to get to know him a little bit. It sounds a little, little uh, not great on this audio recording, but it, it's, it's doable. Um, so if you want to check that out. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but I actually put a Favicon. Oh, I did. Now that I go to say that, I actually have a favicon for basic juma i put a b on the calendar and also when we were looking at youtube and a couple of weeks ago and to add your uh favicon but to your channel remember we saw that to put you put a link to your juma site the favicon refresh and i'm actually quite happy with how that b shows up the asteroid one that came the asteroid favicon that came with the default template or with the template i was using was a little dark and couldn't be seen but i'm actually pretty happy with how that b turned out there so that works well yeah so here you go there's a fake face the one thing too about those ai generated fake faces are uh big they might not look like much but if you shrink them down a little bit they're perfectly fine for avatars so um Pretty cool. All right. What else? Anything else? It doesn't have to be something else. It can be a light week. That was not a long topic either that I was uh, talking about. Uh, who's got any new projects that you're working on? Anyone pick up any new clients? I met with a person a couple of days ago for the weekend. Uh, and they actually, uh, I contacted, I reached out to them about five, six months ago. They have a new business. And I said, hey, are you thinking about uh, having a web page because they're doing a lot of stuff on Facebook and they said yes and we were going to get together and we couldn't it didn't work out and it kind of just got set aside for a while and then recently uh, two weeks ago he reached out to me again and wanted to talk about a website so I thought oh cool so I went and met with him he had questions and then he's thinking about something for the new year so it's not too far away but uh, I thought oh okay cool but anyways sounds like he's going to go with me when he gets that point, but it was a reminder to me that 
uh, sometimes finding clients or getting clients is not just a just a hey do you want a website not right now oh I didn't get that client sometimes it's a long play sometimes it takes a while in order for everything to get negotiated I have a quote that I made maybe about last year for an organization local Salvation Army Church and they're sort of rebranding and moving to a new location and uh, they wanted a quote on a website and that process has taken longer for them but I uh, so I'm kind of anticipating in the next couple months that project will come online too so for those of you that are doing this as a side hustle or for your business don't be discouraged when it takes a long time to get some clients on board because that is just the nature of the business and and uh, maybe what happens which is why uh, especially you know it's coming up uh tomorrow will be 13 months since I've been doing my Joomla, no, 23 months since I've been doing Joomla full-time, I'm doing my business full-time. Um, so if you're starting to look for clients, there's going to be a period of time where you have a lot on the hook or a lot showing interest but aren't going to come until later on. So don't give up. Just keep looking for new things and engaging people because those things could come online in 6 months, 12 months, 18 months. And so, you know, down the road, you're going to reach a point where you have more of a flow of new clients coming along. So, uh, Valerie says she likes the fact that template creator CK, once you've created it, you can reuse over and over and not keep incurring charges. <laughs> um, and then she says, I'm not a JD partner, Tim. Yeah, I actually, <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not a JD partner either. I really like it, and I am good friends with. Uh, I have good friends with Chayton who owns Joom Dev. So, but I, I really, it asteroid clicks with me. So I was just teasing about taking Vinny's wrench away. Uh, Valerie says so you finally begun a Linux hosting plan cPanel, so your learning curve ahead is used. Needs to switch all over, but you're relieved that you can now follow uh, along on vids on the back end cPanel. Yes, asteroid and uh, gantry framework are free. Uh huh. Vinny points out. Yes, um, Valerie, I if you know, I'm open to doing cPanel tutorials. Uh, probably wouldn't put them on this channel, but I do have my other CyberSalt channel, and I've thought about putting tutorials together for that on uh, for my clients that are using cPanel. The only thing being, though, is I think there's a lot of cPanel tutorials out there, so I don't want to just reinvent the wheel. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so if you're doing cPanel stuff, um, you probably can find good tutorials and support for, for it. But uh, if, you, if you don't, I certainly am open to doing some, some tutorials on that on my other channel. Yeah, Vinny uses the free template as starting place and he builds from there. Uh, if anyone can endorse a YouTuber REC panel, that would be great. I think cPanel's channel. Let's, 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 let's have a look here. Let's go back to here. And I'm going to change my glasses. And look, I put the trophy in front to remind me. Okay. Um... Cpanel YouTube tutorials. Do do do. Pretty soon. Let's see. Now they've got Cpanel TV here, so they've got a bunch of stuff. They have eleven thousand subscribers. I'm gonna post the link here. Yes. Um, Known host just sounded a notice that because of the cPanel price increase, they have to raise their rates. Yeah, cPanel just recently bumped their rates up a bunch. Um, yes, so the license. Now, if you, 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 can, you can actually get a cPanel license for one domain if you're running your own private server and you really like cPanel and you don't know Linux or you don't, you don't know the actual yeah linux or whatever ssh actually typing in the code you like the interface you can get a cpanel license for one domain and for your own hosting 
for I think it was like 15 bucks a month which for someone like me it's going to be a lot easier to pay 15 bucks a month or whatever it is and be able to manage my own hosting on a virtual uh, private server VPS uh, and to have that access then doing everything manually that said yes for those that are offering hosting yeah, see, panel put the price up. But this channel here, let's see how many videos they have. They have. Oh, maybe, it must be somewhere where it tells us how many videos they have. Um, uh, how many videos? I wonder where it shows. Anyways, I would say C Panel TV YouTube channel has a ton of stuff on there uh they have some playlists that would be something to check out but that's all okay let's click back here let's see if there's someone else that i would uh just as looking what would i think would be good here uh in fact we should just search on youtube shouldn't we yeah c panel tutorials Learn cPanel in 14 minutes. That sounds ambitious. Um, here's a playlist of cPanel tutorials. But which channel does that belong to? cPanel TV. This is Lawrence. Sorry. And they have 82 there. Now it looks like they've got a bunch set up that you could just watch through in order. All right. Uh, WHM tutorials. Now WHM stands for Web Hoster Web Hosting Private. Manager. This is long. And that is where you can go in and you can manage cPanel accounts and create them for your clients and uh, change some settings on your server as well. So um, WHM is cPanel. Uh, so outbound email threshold, you can set how much email is going out. There's a lot of cool controls that you can have that restrict your cPanel users. I really like WHM. Uh, WHM really is basically a, a graphic user interface instead of having to type in again all those codes in, uh, in, in root and SSH in command line. Uh, boy, they really see panel tutorials. They really come up here. In the, uh, here's another one too that you might, f even though this is HostGator, logging in to C panel. They probably have a bunch. They probably have a bunch here for um, people that would be good. Uh, so it's like, uh, let's see, how to act, how to allow remote access to a MySQL database. The only thing is the voice might be a bit robotic. Allowing remote MySQL connections. Well, they're, they're slow paced. And this they show it on, of course, show you how to allow remote. They show it, of course, on the cPanel interface that HostGator has, but it's, it's similar stuff. And actually this one's from 2011. So some things may have changed, but I find a lot of things don't change on cPanel. The templates change. But uh, that, you know, so a big hosting company that has tutorials, you probably find some things there too. Um, yeah. In motion would probably be another one that has a bunch. Let's see. This is in motion hosting. This is also in. Uh, maybe do they have a playlist? Yeah, so they have cPanel. Let's check this out. 77 videos. But I think Googling the feature that you're interested in cPanel will bring up, or searching in YouTube, the feature that you're looking for will bring up, um, uh, bring up good links for what you're looking for. For instance, let's do this. Um, account backup cPanel searching in YouTube for account backup cPanel so here's in motion how to backup your website files using the backup option cPanel it's two years old 
cPanel how to back up and restore files so that's how to webmaster uh, da, 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 da. yeah yeah so there's a lot on that feature so one of those is going to help you uh, and if we go see panel TV and add in that we can see if there shows up in motion da, 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 where's the file okay there's one that cPanel TV has on file and directory restoration but there's going to be a bunch that come up and I think you'll start to notice which are the uh, which are the ones that you get really familiar with or that you like the style of. So if you're presented with an InMotion one or HostGator and you find that the InMotion one, you like the voice better or, um, or uh, it, they tend to have more current ones, then that will do. That will do. But certainly uh, we can always do some things here on the channel too in our chat time if you're wondering. Yes, I can answer that, Valerie. I, I do not think that you can uh, sell a free template that a company offers uh, because the free ones would be offered under open source uh, uh, regulation, uh, regulations or status. So you can't sell open source software. Um, so yeah, developing, yeah, that if you're going to be selling a, a template, then uh, like selling it online for people to download, then I, I, I don't think you could do that. Having said that, uh, if you're creating a template and using it for clients, use that template and just charge for the service of setting up their, setting up their site and charge something fair. And uh, you can do that. So you're not charging them for the template, but you're charging them for setting it up. And as we've talked about before, there's two ways that you can approach that uh, selling. And that is one, do you charge by the time well, once you've created that template to install, it takes you five minutes, right? Or do you charge by the service, which is what's the quality of the service? So if you create a template that you really like, a base template that you're using, and you've spent six hours doing that, and someone else would have to take 10 hours doing it, the value of that is whatever, you know, six hours times your hourly rate. So if your hourly rate was to use round numbers, something ridiculously low. If your hourly rate is $10, then the value of that is $60. Um, so then the next time you go to install it, you have it done. You know, the, the value of that service that you're offering is $60. And if you can bomb it in in five minutes, then just charge, yeah, template setup charge, $60. And that's, uh, uh, that's the way to go. So, um, yeah, you didn't think either. I guess what you, it means is that the original free template author source code remains there. Yes. Uh, now I could be, um, yes. Uh, yeah. And the, um, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I just play one on TV, but, um, yeah. And under what circumstances could you create a template and then sell it as it stand alone? Be interesting. That might be something to ask, uh, one of the companies that does that does template creation. I know with in Asteroid that there's some people starting to create templates for Asteroid Framework, and uh, but what uh, what they are doing or how how much they're using that they've gotten from somewhere else, I I don't know. I do not know. All right, hey, you want to see some exciting pictures? Oh, John says there's no problem in selling open source software. GPL actually have a section in their license model on how to do that. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. So you can sell open source software. Okay. And there's a section in their license model on how to do that. All right. So uh, check that out. In fact, let's just do that right now. Right screen. Can I sell? GPL software. Can I sell GPL software? Is it legal to sell GPL software? TechRepublic.com. That's thanks, John. Uh, 
Ah, uh, okay. The new project, GNU, itself. What is new, by the way? GNU, that must. Uh, what is GNU? I'll just Google it. What is this? It's going to show me a picture of a new. Uh, GNU. General. Oh, new. It's actually new. Does it stand for something? New is an operating system that has extensive collection of computer, computer software. New is composed wholly of free software. I mean, there's a new there, but I always thought it was an acronym for something. Is acronym. New stands for news, not Unix, which makes the term a recursive acronym in, uh, in which one of the letters stands for the acronym itself. Okay, I think my head's about to explode. Do, 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 do. New stands for news. Okay, so John says you can you can charge for the software, but you have to supply the source code to the customer, and you can't hinder the customer to modify or distribute the code. Okay. What is a recursive acronym? Recursive acronym in which... What is a recursive acronym? Okay, let's see. What is a recursive acronym? Recursive acronym is an acronym that refers to itself. The term was first used as for Check this out here. Recursive acronym is an acronym where the first letter is the acronym itself. <laughs> for example, GNU stands for News Not Unix. Unix. The acronym can be expanded to multiple copies of itself in infinity. Recursive acronyms are used in the some examples of software projects or humorous effect. Following the example of Richard Stallman's new project. What's another example of one? Ein is not Emacs and Zwei was Ein. Other well-known recursive acronyms include Wine. Wine is not an emulator. Curl. C-U-R-L. RPM. RPM manage. Okay, so... If the acronym, the first letter refers to the whole acronym in a name. So a recursive acronym, I'm going to create one right here. Tim is, Tim is Manly. Huh. All right, so that's the recursive acronym, Tim, because the acronym itself is the first word as well. Tim. Tim is manly. All right. Still doesn't tell me what. <laughs> so it's new is not Unix, because new is new, and then N is N, and then, okay. Bet you guys, did, I did not think I'd be talking about this when I woke up. All right, back to uh, that then. So you can uh, you can charge for the software. So you could take a template. You could take a free template and then you could customize it and say, I have customized this template for such and such a use. And this template has been released under GPL. It's open source. And so you can buy it from me and download it. And the only thing, what you have to do is 
I think give original credit and you also have to, oh, um, maybe not even that, but you also have to uh, make it so that they can, they have the code, they can do whatever they want with it. Okay. I think you have to give, I think you have to give some credit in it too. That just makes sense. Uh, let's go back to this page here, though. Uh, with that said, uh, uh, the new project itself encourages people who redistribute free software to charge as much as they wish or can. You can charge nothing, a penny, a dollar, or a billion dollars. It's up to you and the marketplace. Please note that as much as you wish only applies to the executable form of the software, not its source code. Okay, so this is explaining that if you want to sell a binary copy of a GPL software program, you must include either its complete source code or a written form, formal offer valid at least three years to provide it to whoever possesses the binary in more detail. In more detail, you have to provide a copy of the complete sources for a price no more than your reasonably reasonable cost of physically delivering them or access to copy the complete sources from a network server at no charge. Of course, all users of free software enjoy these same freedoms. The people to whom you sold copies of GPL software are just as free as you to make copies and sell them for whatever price they feel is right, including a price equal to zero. The same general conditions apply to other popular FOSS licenses. Uh, free open source software licenses. I would guess open, open Office, for example, is distributed under the Apache license. This means quoting from a resource link below. But everybody can that everybody can sell it via eBay or any other channel for whatever price they are willing to pay without any obligation to share their profits with Open Office community. It's kind of a mind bender when you think about it. It's all this free stuff that you can sell. Now, if you're adding value, that makes sense. But I was, but then if someone else likes what you've got, they can just take it and uh, use it. Uh, da, da, da. If you grab some software released with a GPL or similar license, you do get the right, among others, to sell that code, as explained above, without giving a penny back or even saying thanks. You do not, however, automatically get any right to say that it is your original work, keep the logo of my organization on it, tell your customers or let them believe that we are partners or that I am obligated in any way to give them support or refunds if they are not satisfied. This doesn't mean that those actions are always surely illegal. It just means that they are customers' rights or fair business issues outside the scope of the software license. All right, so you can't take something and say, hey, this is my original work and I've got my logo on it. You must leave it on there forever. So you can't claim ownership of it. And um, you can't lead people to think that uh, you are a partner with them. Um, so you can't say, uh, yeah, this is a this is a rocket theme template that I've done up for them and we're working together. All right. Definitely something more to keep reading up on, Valerie, if you're going to do that. And here's the new operating thing right here. Many people believe the spirit of new projects that you should not charge money for distributing copies of software or that you should charge as little as possible, just enough to cover the cost. This is a misunderstanding. Actually, we encourage people to redistribute free software to charge as much as they wish or can. And if a license does not permit users to make copies and sell them, it's a non, it is a non-free license. This seems surprising to you. Read on. So here, I think this is probably the link that you want to check out there, Valerie. Uh, so you definitely uh, want to check the software and templates and see that you're doing and see if they are being, if they've been distributed, anything you're using, make sure it was distributed under new GPL. Okay. A 
Uh, one of the positive things about open source software is that if someone abandons a project, you can pick it up. So periodically in Joomla, there are projects or extensions or components that are not that someone for whatever reason is not developing anymore. They've moved on to a new business or they've moved on or maybe they've passed on and it was never picked up. You can take those projects and fork them and, uh, and give them a different name and continue on and provide that functionality and bring them up to date or you can take the little bits of them and use them elsewhere. Um, I mean, it's a great system when you think about it, because here we are all using Joomla, using all of these extensions, using all of this code, and it is free. Because if we all had to pay for all the functionality that we have in, in, in a product, for all the functionality that we have in Joomla and uh, other things that we can add to it, we definitely would be uh, definitely would be hard pressed for that. Okay. Yes, and Joomla is a fork of Mambo. Uh, LibreOffice is a fork of OpenOffice. I knew that about Joomla. Uh, 2005, I think it was, that Joomla forked off of Mambo because they were in disagreement about uh, whether uh, there's about financial control or someone trying to make um, Mambo more of a business or to exert their own will. I, I forget. I didn't even fully understand it back then because I was just starting out using Mambo. But uh, yeah, so then a bunch of people say, hey, that's an, uh, let's make a fork of Mambo and we'll follow our principles. And interestingly, there are people that uh, sometimes suggest that Joomla should be forked into a different product as well because of their own feelings about certain developments. Um, so... Uh, Drew, not Drew Paul. Yes, Drew Paul. Drew Paul came out with, I don't know if they went from version 7 to 8, but anyways, they just had a big change and a lot, of, a bunch of people did not like the new version of Drew Paul. And so they actually have, they're keeping the previous version of Drew Paul going in its own iteration. And they're not going to, they're not continuing down the road with the Drew Paul people. But they're taking Drupal as it is, and they're saying, okay, I'm just going to take this, we're going to take this, and we're going to work on it and have our own thing. So, which I was thought, I thought was interesting, because uh, they'll still have to develop it. They'll still have to keep it up, I suppose, because as time marches on, security patches need to be done. And so if you're going to uh, take something out of its environment where everybody knows and is working on it, you're going to have... To create another whole maintenance side of that but no, i thought it was interesting uh you know a lot of the discussions about different software are really discussions about community and really are discussions of people that are um their own feelings and their own emotions about things because uh, I was reading the other day, someone was complaining about how the WordPress community is and uh, why some things aren't talked about and some things aren't done or if people suggest things that get shot down or whatever. I mean, much the same stuff that we hear sometimes people talking about Joomla or that. And, you know, I, I found in life that a lot of arguments that people have this is certainly true in marriage or, or friendships or anything. But a lot of arguments that people have with other people, they're not even arguing about the issue. I think they're more interacting with their own values and their own feelings and their own perspectives and what they think and their presumptions. And, uh, but they get so hyper-focused on the thing that they think is the issue, they don't step back and realize what, what's going on inside of them. And I think, the same, I think that's some, a, a big thing that goes on in Juma is that people don't realize that it's their own feelings, it's their own thoughts, their own blah, 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 that, that, that's really generating the heat and the passion, uh, not necessarily even just the issues. Sure, and, and you know, we can, when we have differences with other people, if we can be calm and kind and collect it and discuss, more is going to come out of that than if we are just blindly reacting to our own selves what's going on inside of us. And a lot of times that blind reaction, that stuff that's happening to us, we think we're reacting to that person, 
but in fact we're really reacting to ourselves and so we need to know ourselves and what we're bringing to something in order to change it and treat others uh valerie tangentially related um your uh valerie says i'm a bit nervous relying on joomla extensions where essentially actually there's just one person behind it uh what's the succession planning and uh are you missing something no i think i think that that is a legitimate thing valerie i know that uh when i check out extensions i did a live stream on what's a good joom extension i kind of look and see what the person's track record is see how long they've been doing things are they part of a team is it a company i mean there's a lot of like for instance uh foca uh jan uh pavel i'm not going to say his last name properly I, he's in i think he's in the czech republic he does foca so he's got foca graph foca gallery he's doing ton of stuff he's doing so much stuff he's got to have a company also i know he's got a team he's got a lot of people working in the forms and his stuff is open source so i have been pretty comfortable using stuff from him um there are a few things yeah if you're if like so that's why that was so nice about john moholtz hold a meta you know there's some software for putting in um seo things but if that ever was discontinued or that person stopped working on it then all that work is done so the nice thing about hold a meta is as we know is that you can, all that stuff stays in the core and custom fields but yeah there are some people so for instance um that's a regular labs awesome extensions i think peter has 29 peter's uh, peter's a one-man show jce editor ryan denmer he is uh demmer sorry if i'm pronouncing that wrong ryan uh he's a one-man show i thought jc was a company he's a one-man show um and so in that sense uh yeah what's the business continuance model in open source i think probably someone picking it up um but i think uh peter's a one man yeah vinnie says peter's not a one-man show he's a one-man show when it comes to the programming oh he's a two-man show who's the second man or has he duplicated himself? Is that what you're saying? You know, um, I think that would be a great um, question to add to Joomcast interviews. What's a business continuance plan? oh phil taylor now phil taylor you're a one-man show as well phil you're I, i'm happy to see your face because usually you have some gobbledygook or something like that a lurker reveals himself uh yeah so phil is a one-man show as well so now i know i've seen phil joke about um uh artificial intelligence he's got some stuff that's just actually adapts itself so uh he did comment that if something happened to him, it would continue on for months afterwards but yeah and sometimes uh okay andy badwell is also a programmer but i and andy works andy badwell works with uh with um peter but i don't think i think peter does the programming Andy does a lot of the ideas andy's had a lot of influence on that but um yes a one-man show phil should i fire you uh should i fire anyone want to talk on zoom phil you want to come on and talk about your uh, business continuance plan if your plane for some reason does not land properly or your tesla uh takes over and will not uh <laughs> and will not let you out of the car oh phil's plan is to die young okay mary says she's a one-man show and she's happy to support others yeah valerie i think i think the big sum up for me is i kind of look and i try to see how solid something is and uh how they're going to continue if it seems kind of shaky or they're not stable they're not going to be around for a long time 
I wouldn't get too far invested in them. That said, there's always going to be there's always going to be disruption when someone goes out of business or passes away, and it may very well you know who's who's to say that in two years or one year or one month that we aren't saying oh my goodness what a change this is going to be to Joomla now that so and so passed away in an accident who is going to fill their spot and uh, boy uh, I I think it was something that was really key and crucial a lot of uh, as far as extensions go a lot of pe uh, I think a lot of community would come up with a plan and step in and come up with something or I bet you if it was even uh, I bet you that if it was something that so many people used and didn't want to get lost, that maybe people would include it in the core. Although it would get included in the core of Juma. That said, though, the core should be kept light so that it can be updated and people can actually step in and add things. Phil has been around longer than Joomla. Yes, I've been around longer than Joomla, too. I was born in 1965. <laughs> um... I, it's funny, you know, years ago I bought one of Phil's extensions uh, that I used in, I forget what, I think it was a help desk, MOS, no, Moss Knowledge, I, does that sound familiar? Um, uh, anyways, I'm definitely going to add that business continuance model to Joomcast. Joomcast, the podcast. New episode out today. Um, yes, so it was my knowledge base was a Mambo extension. Yeah, so I bought that years ago, and um, and then it was you know not, then it was a super long time. And then when uh, I reconnected with Phil when he contacted me about doing a review of. Uh, not what is now my sites guru um, then I thought oh wait Phil, why how do I know that name and I think I searched back through my emails and I thought oh yeah I bought extensions from him so filiform okay that rings a bell but I don't know if I ever used that all right well listen what I'm going to just for fun just to tempt people I'm gonna fire up a zoom call here if you want to call in or someone wants to talk let's see here it's slowly starting do 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 copy invitation start that and i'll join with audio hey so if anybody wants to talk i know you don't like talking you notice i don't do this all the time now i stopped just saying i stopped creating a call because no one was going into it anyways it tastes oh phil has to go look at the tide it's the highest tide of the year and gale force winds. Oh, that's right. You've got the big hurricane heading towards you. Um, that means it's going to be the highest tide of the year here, probably. You're on the left coast of Canada in a little while. Well, I will watch for pictures of that, Phil. Phil, promotion, promotion, promotion. Need you on the channel. Need you in Zoomcast. Hit me up, buddy. Let's talk about it. Let's make some plans. Uh, I'm doing some, uh, actually in the process of, uh, doing some, uh, extension tutorials for a developer. He's got four extensions. I'm going to be talking about those in the future as well, but, um, yes, Mary says, stay safe. We need you to live. Well, there's a warm sentiment. Don't die because we don't want you to die. Don't die because we need you to be alive. <laughs> Phil, don't die for any number of reasons. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, I just heard a I just heard a funny sound. It said <laughs> and I was like, what is that sound? I don't know it. I got a DM. Alright, I will check that out, Phil. Do 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 do. In fact, maybe uh do, do, do. I'm gonna guess that, that was oh yeah, my Twitter does not tweet. It uh, it uh, sounds like a bottle cap hitting a ground. All right, let's see. Just check this out here.
Okay, that was a personal. I like it, Phil. Sounds good. All right, so <laughs> Phil, set, send some Tide pictures. Uh, follow Phil on uh, Twitter at this address. Uh, at da, 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 da. let me just find it here. He is. Uh, I'll just find a link here right on Twitter. At uh, 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 do do do. Do, 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 do. There you go. Here we go. That's that's uh, Phil's Twitter there. Follow him for tide pictures. Hurricane making a direct hit of Jersey. All right, and everybody, if you want to post your uh, if you want to post your Twitter or Facebook or whatever here in chat, so we can be in touch with each other, feel free to. If you don't have a wrench yet for posting links, then uh, uh, we'll hook you up. All right, anything else? Anything else to talk about? Yeah, no one's coming. No one's coming on Zoom. <laughs> I mentioned to you last week how uh, when I was preaching a couple Sundays ago, filling in for the pastor of our church, that uh, there's a point where I was just talking casually, and I looking back and I realized, oh, that 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 felt a lot just like live streaming, um, except I was just there was actually I could see the people in the room with me that I was talking to instead of that. So um, I like I like live streaming. It's kind of quirky. It's also too. I'll tell you when I'm at the. Uh, I I when when people want to do something on a Monday morning or a Wednesday morning, I say oh, I can't. I have a regular live stream that I do because it just sounds cool. <laughs> Everybody in the world can live stream, and uh, you know we don't get too many people on here watching live, but uh, uh, it's still it's still got that mystique. So I say it in a way so that people are going like, oh yeah, well I, I'm gonna do something. Oh Tim Davis live streams. And uh, just, I'm not saying fake it till you make it, but uh, speak confidently. You might even convince yourself that you're uh, that you can do whatever it is that you're trying to do. So, and Phil, uh, your Phil's Tesla. Now, I saw a Tesla, a video the other day of a Tesla of someone getting out their phone and looking in the parking lot. It was an empty parking lot, anyways. And they called it, and the Tesla came over to them. So I thought that was, that's also kind of, that's cool. That is cooler than the artificial intelligence faces that were the topic today. So, <laughs> oh, Valerie says you have no idea how to, how I pull it off. It looks, it's a lot harder than it looks. The technology is harder. And, uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before. So, but I used to, uh, I used to run out of breath cause I was so nervous when I would go live streaming and now it's uh now I just do it uh a couple of years ago on the Colbert show there was someone who is a YouTuber who is hosting who became becoming a host on a show on Nickelodeon and so Stephen Colbert had her on his show and he was interviewing her and it was interesting because he would ask a question and she would answer and then she would comment about it so she would say he would say so uh, uh, are you looking forward to doing this show and she says oh I'm looking forward to doing this show although I might embarrass myself not that I don't already embarrass myself all the time so little quips like that and it was it was weird she seemed really weird but then I realized what was happening because as a youtuber as someone who live streams because you're by yourself you actually have to interact with yourself uh, and imagine and and it comes across as quirky or whatever, but otherwise you're just standing there. You say something and there's no feedback, so you have to anticipate it. They almost take on like you need a half, an extra half personality. So what she was doing was, even though it seems strange, because Stephen Colbert really didn't need to be there for the interview, um, but it was just something from live streaming. So, uh, oh, Lisa Koshi, okay, uh, Lisa, yeah, all right. So, um, so. The other thing, too, is that I was watching that as an old guy, too, right? So I thought, oh, my goodness, what's up with this younger generation? Note to self, 
and note to yourself, if you're looking at someone and think, what is wrong with this younger generation? It's just because you're getting older. Um, they may be doing some weird stuff, but that's a key sign that, uh oh, you're getting older and uh, just trying to refocus on, on something else. Because, uh, anyways, yeah, so, uh, Le La I L Liza. Oh, Liza! Of course it's Liza. <laughs> Lisa, 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 Liza. Yeah, like Liza Minnelli. Anyways, so, well, yeah, so that's the quirky thing about YouTube and live streaming because otherwise, uh, yeah. Okay, well, anything else? Uh, Wednesday, we'll take a look at <laughs> quantum manager that's what we're going to take a look at nornex quantum manager a file and media manager rights computer screen there we go we'll look at this on wednesday we're going to just we'll take a quick look at it it's free and um play it we'll play around with it Uh, so we'll do that on uh, we'll do that on Wednesday. Um, what else? Well, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. What else is going on? All right. Anything else? Anybody? If not, forever hold. Not forever hold your peace, but hold your peace till Wednesday. Enjoy the creepy free faces at uh, generated.photos. Why not? Why not? All right, everybody. I think at that point, yes, Valerie says later. At that point, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out again. Suggestions, topics, helping each other out. And uh, that's it. Everybody, we'll see you on Wednesday. Enjoy your GMO sites. And God bless. <laughs>